Oh, right guys, we're in the city of uh, Zapalarne, uh, near Varkuta, and we've uh, been just uh, pulled over by uh, the police. It's been uh, it's been already 15 minutes since uh, the police officer got my passport. He's been giving it back. Uh, they got all curious about my drone and the fact that uh, there's Stefano next to me, my uh, travel buddy here. Stefano is from Italy, uh, a country that is deemed unfriendly. Not friendly country. I mean, things are looking sketchy, and uh, this trip got off to a really bumpy oh, start. Yes. We were told to follow that car, that police car, and uh, they're gonna take us uh, to a police uh, department for questioning. There's a one car driving in front of us. And then there's another one. Following us from behind. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation, right? Well, it all started with my visit to Varkuta. A strange town in the Arctic Circle, often dubbed the most depressing place on Earth. Built as a model Soviet community after World War II, this area has since declined. Leaving behind what may be the world's biggest string of ghost towns, forever trapped in an endless frozen desert. Look at this. Holy <laughs> the frost is blanketing everything inside this building. But what caught me by surprise wasn't the ghost towns ruled by stray dogs. Like a Resident Evil, you know? Or the strange wire stretching from cars to what seemed like abandoned apartments. Not even the encounter with the local police. It was the resilient people who continue to inhabit this formidable place and refuse to call it depressing. Definitely not. That's a total lie. Yeah. This is really the most beautiful place. You must see this place in summer. Come along as we set out on a journey that flips the script, proving once again that there is much more lurking behind murky titles. Joining me is Stefano, who's ranked among Italy's top five travel bloggers. His profound interest in Russia and his strong connection with his country brought a unique perspective to our exploration. That's what makes Russian people invincible in my eyes. Most people traveling to Varkuta opt for a two-night sleeper train from Moscow. We chose to save a day of travel by flying to the city of Ukhta first. Here we are in the city of Ukhta. What a jolly name for a town. There, we boarded a 12-hour sleeper train to Varkuta that, to my surprise, still relies on coal to keep the cars nice and warm. This is us. This is going to be our cabin for the next 12 hours. Here, in the cozy warmth of a second-class cabin, against the backdrop of soothing winter landscapes and the rhythm of the train tracks, Stefano and I delved into a very interesting conversation. So what do you expect from Borkuta? Yeah. Well, of course, you know, I expect what everybody knows, like a lot of uh, abandoned and degraded areas. But actually, uh, I want to see how people truly live there, beyond stereotypes. It, there must be a reason why 30,000 more people still live there. Traveling is about discovering, no? it's about challenging stereotypes. A few years back, Stefano fell in love with a girl only to discover she was none other than Russian pop star Sati Kazanova. Their wedding was a sensation, throwing Stefano straight into the whirlwind of Russian showbiz. Yet despite the glitz and glamour, Stefano's heart remained distant from the dazzle of red carpets and the buzz of Moscow's high society. There is nothing more precious than a traveler that to find a secret store that nobody knows, and Russia is like a 
like one of the biggest source of hidden treasures that nobody knows is such a mystery for most of the rest of the world. Yeah, good. All right, so here we go, uh, stepping off the train right into the heart of uh, Varkuta, where the Arctic chill greets you right away. <laughs> you can see it. So this is where the adventure really begins, right? Sure, we could have grabbed a taxi, but if you want to get a true taste of a place, public transportation is the way to go. Uh -huh. wow. А можно картой расплатиться? Можно. Присаживайся, я сейчас возьму терминал. First impressions. I'm shocked because in Italy you cannot pay bus tickets by car even in center of Milan. Really? <laughs> you can pay it in Borgutta. Ну, нам надо на Гагарина Вы нам покажете, как до Гагарина дойти? This man is really nice. He, uh, he uh, agreed to show us the way to, to our apartment. Короче, вот так вот, да? Мимо елки. Ага. И прямо вот так видите на 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 Вот это вот уже улица пошла вот Гагарина. Вот. Never happened to me anywhere else in the world that the, the right moment you step off the bus, there is somebody coming to you. Listen, you need help. I can guide you, and it, they literally guide us where we needed to go. It's amazing, like not even in Japan had these things happen, it, and it happens in Vorkuta. Yeah. We feel welcome yeah. in Vorkuta. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We're in the very center of the city, so this is the most alive part of the city, and so this is kind of biased. But the very first impression is that the fame of the oppressive town is absolutely unjustified at this moment, but let's give it some more time. <laughs> There's actually one slightly gloomy thing about Varkuta. The early darkness. Guess what time it is now? 2.25 p.m. So half past two, lunchtime. And it's, look at this. <laughs> it's already dark. We quickly realized that the polar nights could hold hidden dangers, especially when kids play outside in the dim light. Just moments after I filmed the children carrying their snow tubes, a car struck one of the boys. The boy spit blood and couldn't remember what had just happened to him. This and the size of the lump on his head worried Stefano, who, by the way, holds a medical degree in Italy. And we took the boy to his parents. <laughs> Standing next to his concerned mother, all the boy could think about was how he didn't want to miss school. Самое главное, чтобы в школу шел. Не волнуйся. Не переживай. Ничего скажет. Не переживай. Хорошо? Вот. Well, you know what? I think you did a great job by uh, making sure that uh, you know the kid is. Uh... Well, I mean, it's it's not that small thing, you know, because it's such a huge bubble, let's say, in uh, in few seconds, and he actually has a small difference in the diameter of the of the eyes, you know. Ребят, будто очень внимательны. У вас нет тормоза с этот этот вещь, понимаете? Если вы на такой низкий уровень Despite this little incident, the city made a nice first impression, especially after sunset. 
The streets were buzzing with life, illuminated by lights, with people going shopping or heading home from work. It wasn't the ghost town we'd expected to see. Something completely random and uh, unexpected has just happened with us. So we were just filming in this uh, location and uh, we heard a group of boys just running down the street uh, singing Russian anthem. And then they realized that Stefano is uh, from Italy and that, would, uh, that led to uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, Italian is the sound deal. Yeah? Yes. Yes. Tell me in Italian. What do you want to do in Italian? What do you want to do? Hello. Hello. Let alone the fact that they were singing the Russian and then with such enthusiasm. They were so excited to go playing football in this weather in Vorkuta in the polar night where you know it's complete darkness since 2 p.m. today, okay? Once again, this is not something you would expect in a so-called dying city. So for an average Italian, like this very scene is shocking. Like a normal Italian mama would never allow his kids to go and play in the snowy <laughs> terrain. Yeah, but here in Barcota it's possible. Still under the strong first impression of the city, we met a nice woman with flawless English named Bethany. She'd moved to Vorkuta from Namibia of all places and had family ties here. I'm telling you, that day was full of surprises. Do you agree that this city is the most depressing city on earth? Because that's what they say. Definitely not. That's a total lie. This is when your BBC journalists, they come in here and all they show the whole world is dilapidated buildings. They show this and that and everything that yeah. is negative. They don't actually get to the heart of the people. And that to me is incredibly upsetting. morning, remember now, Russia's at war. This is a military little town. So, have integrity. You don't want to upset the police and you don't want to, this, there's a lot of military personnel, you don't want to upset their eye. At that moment, we only had a vague idea of what Bethany was talking about, but we were soon to find out. Wow, look at this. Another lovely day in Varkuta. <laughs> well, this is actually very interesting. You have all these cars running. There's nobody inside. Look at that. Yeah, well, because uh, it's so cold here during winter, people love to keep their cars warm in advance. On our second day, we left Varkuta to explore what lies outside the city limits. You really feel at the edge of the world, like in a, in a sort of interstellar movie, but with coal mines. By the late 1980s, Varkuta was a bustling hub, surrounded by 13 mining towns that formed the backbone of the Soviet coal industry in the Arctic. After the USSR's collapse, many coal mines were shut down, which led to a massive population outflow. Thriving communities turned into ghost towns, frozen and forgotten. Even Vorkuta, which seemed lively in the center, has entire districts that stand completely abandoned. With more apartments available than people to fill them, the local real estate market has found itself in a strange position where a two-bedroom apartment can go for as little as $3,000. Oh wow, look at this. I think this is it. Zapaliarnia. It's the first ghost town. Look at these buildings. Uh, 
like the whole street is abandoned. I, I wonder, like, when... It's interesting to understand when is this city being abandoned. According to Wikipedia, Zapalarny once had nearly 10,000 residents. The latest census, however, counted only 483. <laughs> All right, let's go explore. Hey, come check this out. I want to show you something real quick. I bet you've never seen something like this. There is a wire that runs from uh, that apartment uh -huh. <laughs> to the car. Ah, it keeps ah, it keeps it warm, maybe. maybe. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> it's just I've never seen technology like this. <laughs> well, just to make sure that the battery is not going down. Huh? Yeah, you gotta be creative in a place like this. Look at this. <laughs> the frost is blanketing everything inside this building. The ice has completely captured, conquered this, this place. <laughs> it's right here. I don't know, I know there's, uh, there's no one here, but uh, Still, it kind of feels weird as if we're uh, searching for someone's... Uh, Looks like we're stealing in somebody's house. Yeah, 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 because there's just so many things that are left. Well, you can definitely tell that there are a lot of abandoned buildings in this uh, in this town. Like, we were just passing, there was an entire street of abandoned uh, houses. But then you can still see people living here. And over there, there's uh, a man uh, cleaning up uh, the snow. I think this is an in-between stage, right, this city? I think it's already beyond some line, but still it's people living here. Yeah. And it, they look like a kind of suspicion in our regards. You've noticed something? Yeah, yeah. They look at us in a very strange way because we clearly look not from here. Stefano's gut feeling was prescient. Out of the blue, we were stopped by the police, who seemed to come out of nowhere. They instructed us to head to the police station and grilled us with all sorts of questions for a few hours. Oh my god. Oh, shit. Well, I gotta tell you, this was quite an experience. So we just left uh, the police station right behind me. Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, that was intense, I mean, especially in the beginning. So the first, it was just about my drone and the fact that I uh, flew it. Apparently, there are some military installations and... The fact uh, that you own it. Not even that you flew it, but just the fact that you have one. Also yes. that I flew it, actually. Yes. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, they just, you know, flip through the footage and realize there's nothing uh, that's considered off limits that we filmed, so we were good. But then... <laughs> Then, <laughs> then focus shifted uh, Stefana, uh, a foreigner, uh, and apparently there was this issue with uh, uh, the guy who we rented an apartment from not registering him properly, and that would, you know, led to a the whole point is that, conundrum. Uh, according to Russian law, if you are a, in a, a foreign citizen, even if you have a residence permit, the moment you move from the place you live and you stay in a hotel or whatever, the owner of the hotel has to register you so that the local police and all services, they know that you are staying there for some time. And the owner of our apartment didn't do so. And that's shit in Russia, believe me. <laughs> so, yeah, you should see the face of the people that was, you know, you, you Constantine, you're a Russian citizen. I'm fine with you, but I have a lot of questions for you, Stefano. <laughs> you are a foreign citizen. What are you doing here, Rasmus? 
Yeah. Come on, I'm doing nothing bad. Well, in the end, it was like all friendly, and nice. Uh, but uh, at first, I think they were just trying to, you know, play the, you know, bad policeman. Well, you know, uh, I think that any policeman in the world, at first, they try to put you under pressure so that you are not even thinking to say a lie or something. But if you're good, if you're quiet, and mostly if you didn't do anything bad. It's not different as any other situation in police and all around the world. We're off the hook now. Huh? Uh, stuff, 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 stuff. After a day as intense as that, we thought we definitely deserved a treat. But what options do you have in Vorkuta? Stefan actually had the guts to propose whipping up a classic Italian dinner here in Vorkuta. And my reaction, you know, when someone offers to cook, you don't say no to that, right? <laughs> but it also crossed my mind, you know, how challenging would it be to find the right ingredients for an authentic Italian dish here in Vorkuta, a city that is basically at the edge of the world, right? <laughs> so, uh, challenge accepted. Italian olive oil, Filippo Berio. <laughs> like real Italian oil? Absolutely. Oh, you see? There is Monini. There is extra virgin olive oil. It's insane. Did you find in Italy, actually? All your Monini. But this is pasta barilla, look at that. In Barilla, it's, uh, it's, it's quite common in Russia. Yeah, okay, but it's Vorkuta. I mean, it's La Molisana, it's actually unexpected. It's... Then you have, of course, all these Russian brands. What can you tell me about the selection of products so well, far? Well, you know, it's... Of course, there is less options than in a big supermarket in Moscow, of course, but still pretty decent so far. Compared to Italy? No, come on. So it looks like of all the vegetables, for example, they're quite old because there is a, they have a lot of problems of logistic here. You know, it, it's not easy to get fresh stuff here. Hopefully we can make do with uh, what we have. Hmm, it does the job. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's amazing. <laughs> no, it, it just, it blows my mind because you made it out of really basic products. And that's uh, the secret of Italian kitchen, you know? Is it? <laughs> so, you know, can you imagine the pizza? Everybody is crazy about pizza. It's like uh, flour, water, and salt. What, what's the name of this uh, pasta? Well, it doesn't have a name, but you know, it's pretty much close to what we call pasta alla boscaiola. Mm -hmm. Like Bosco means wood or forest in Italy, and basically anything that is done with mushrooms or anything that grows in the woods fell into that category, let's say. But I want to think of it as we're having pasta, bascaiola, mm -hmm. alla varcuta. <laughs> alla varcuta. <laughs> this is a varcuta edition. On our third day, we teamed up with a local named Sasha. Although he works in one of the few remaining coal mines in Varkuta, his true passion couldn't be further from the soot and dust of coal mining. Sasha is an avid photographer who captures mind-blowing shots of his hometown with a depth and perspective only someone truly connected to this place could achieve. Be sure to check out his Instagram, the link is in the description. Sasha led us to the small town where he grew up, a place that officially closed a few years ago when its last resident left. But we quickly realized this ghost town wasn't completely uninhabited. I wanted to go a little bit further, but then we stumbled upon stray dogs right there. And, uh, well, the guys told okay, me that some of them uh, might, be, might be sick. Uh, but it's just interesting that these dogs showed us that they own this place, not humans. And we're basically leaving to try to find another way because <laughs> we don't want to, you know, mess with them. Crazy, right? It's like a Resident Evil, you know? You have to be afraid of dogs and zombies. Well, the guys told us it's not uncommon for dogs to be left behind. 
with nowhere else to go, they continued to guard their homes, holding onto the hope that one day their owners will return. Собака, собака, иди к нам. Все хорошо, собака, все хорошо. Все нормально, все хорошо. Can you imagine? Maybe he doesn't see any human being for a long time. It's, it may be that he's been abandoned here, you know. And God knows which kind of feelings he has. And you can see he's not aggressive, you know. These aggressive dogs, they behave in a different way. But definitely is not threatening us. Actually, it seems more that it's us threatening him. Guys, this looks absolutely insane. Look at this. Здесь проводились разные выступления, концерты. Вот дискотеки здесь проводились, были разные секции, танцы, художественная школа рисования. Сотни ребят принимает ежедневно дворец пионеров. It used to be a very beautiful place, and now nothing's left. Comes to my mind how fragile. Everything is, you know? That everything that we imagine that it can be eternal, it takes just a very few years to, to disappear. Nature is going to take its place. Finally, we found the house where Sasha used to live. Well, the house is here. This is her. То, что от нее сейчас осталось. Когда собирались ехать домой, я всегда к этому окну подходил. А с этого окна видна дорога а, в город. То есть я вот видел, автобус едет. Мама, мама, папа, все, автобус едет, все, бегом, собираемся, бежим. Как себе не печально все это видеть? Грустно, грустно. I could tell he was overwhelmed seeing his hometown that evoked such bright memories, now completely ruined and abandoned. Do you want to go to Zorkuty? I want to... I want to, let's say, live in civilization. I haven't said that I have a lot of years. Possibilities, perspectives. More in Central Russia. Нежели вот здесь в Аркуте. А переехав там в Центральную Россию, я ну, уже вижу, что я могу развиваться, двигаться, есть конкуренция какая-то. He'd love to stay home, but he understands that if he wants to follow his dream and pursue a career in photography, he'll have to leave one day. With the gloom cast by the deserted towns and ruined communities, we decided it was time for something fun. This is actually the last working cinema theater in the entire Varkuta area, and it's located in the small town of uh, Vargashor. And you know what? It just struck me that, uh, you know, in a few years, this, this little town uh, might close down, and so will this cinema theater, which is, by the way, one of the few movie theaters in the Arctic Circle. So, you know what I think? I think we should definitely catch a movie here. Добрый день. Мы тут проезжали мимо и поняли, что это кинотеатр, да? А мы успеваем на какой-нибудь сеанс? Добрый день. Что, а мы хотели э, на какой-нибудь ближайший сеанс сходить? 13.30 фильм «Воздух»? Давайте. Можно нам 4 билета, пожалуйста? Ага, все. Спасибо. All right, we've got the tickets. We've got the tickets. We believe in, we're going to catch a movie. We're in one of the most northern cinema theaters in the world. Interestingly, this cinema didn't show any Hollywood or European movies. Just Russian films. So, so the film, right? yes. Oh, 
it's already running. He's definite. Are you excited about catching a movie? Amazing. It's a long time I don't go to the movies. I never imagined I would go to Borgo Tano. All right, guys, this is the movie. Начальная сцена. Ну, у нас вообще в России снимают военный фильм очень классно. А вы думаете, что мужчины лучше летают? Нет, не лучше. Yeah, that was so cool, actually. Apparently, this was uh, this was a movie uh, about World War II and about female pilots trying to yeah, I... find their place, uh, you know, amongst men. They were only flying at night, without lights, and they were all women, and they made a lot of damage to the German army. Well, this is one of those stories to remember, right? The first movie. Uh, well, well, we've been in at the movies in one of the most northernmost Soviet. Kino Theater. Yeah, in the Arctic Circle, guys. It's just, it doesn't happen every day. No, Trust me. Not. <laughs> в Аркуте побывали блогеры, которые изучают северные регионы России. On our way back to Varkuta, we got snagged by a local TV crew. Turns out our three-day adventure has stirred up enough buzz to turn us into a story ourselves. And let me tell you, that local reporter had, let's say, a unique sense of humor. Olga, <laughs> we had one last mission to fulfill before leaving Varkuta, the check-in on the boy who was hit by a car on the first day of our trip. Well, you know what, at least we know that uh, this boy is going to leave and, uh, you know, he's out of the woods, so... Uh, it's fine. He's in hospital still, after two days still in hospital. Once we've done this, I guess it's uh, time to go home. We did what you had to do in Borgota. It was a wild ride. It was a wild ride. We had a wild everything. We got arrested. We uh, we, we we had all sorts of weird uh, interactions with people. Absolutely, we we had. I mean, the police, the accident, the Namibian woman, the old, the boys. Basically, I have to say, very rarely, I had trips where only in two days you got to live so many emotions so different from each other, from each other. Oh, yes, and actually sure. to get to know so quickly the true nature of a place. This is very interesting. I'm still meditating upon it because it's... Actually, Borgota went beyond my expectation. 